All right, what we're going to be looking at is Enscape for SketchUp today. All right, so Enscape is a plugin. Once you install it, it can be accessed via your extensions tab, or if you right click on your toolbar, you can enable Enscape right here as well. And then you can dock it. So, how you start Enscape is what you're going to do is click the little play button in the top left hand corner here. From there, that's going to take everything inside the SketchUp window. It's going to push that inside of Enscape. There's going to be a menu that pops up on your far right hand corner. It's a little question mark. This is your help menu. This is going to tell you some really useful information about how to navigate around using WASD keys. You can even use your arrow keys as well. How to orbit around, holding the right mouse click wherever you orbit around, or whatever you right click on and move your mouse around. You can do some really cool things right away, like change the time of the day. So if I hold down shift and right mouse click, I'll be able to interactively change the time of the day and see what my space is going to look like at virtually any time of the day. So really powerful to be able to show your clients that. Now where the real power of Enscape comes in is it's a real-time window into your model. So as I'm working inside of SketchUp, Enscape's going to be updating for me in real time here. So whatever changes I'm making to my model, Enscape's going to be showing me the real-time model updates. So if I'm drawing or adding textures or anything like that, Enscape's going to update for me in real time here. Again, just try like a little box over here. So again, that's where the real power of Enscape comes in, is being able to see those changes happen instantaneously there. So while I'm working, what we can do is we can place assets, so that's how I have different types of trees, um, materials, and lighting as well. So we'll start with uh, assets before we get ready to do a rendering. So with our asset library, we have over 3,000 pre-built assets for us to choose from. So let's say I want to start placing some vegetation. All I have to do is scroll down and pick a tree that I like. Let's stay, let's put one of these trees. Again, all I gotta do is start clicking and placing where I like my trees to be. And we can see they're gonna update for me inside of Enscape here in real time. I can also place assets inside of the Enscape window and have those show up inside of SketchUp for me. So that's where this nice bi-directional link uh, really comes into play here. So let's say I want to add some bushes along here. All I have to do is start clicking and placing. There we go. And then again, all I got to do is hit the Apply Changes button, and it's going to take those changes and push those back inside of SketchUp for me. I can select any one of them, move them, scale them, rotate them as well if I would like. And so that's kind of nice bi-directional link. So now in regards to materials, we have our own material library. So it's the material swatch up here. So we ship with over 300 pre-built materials for us to choose from. So let's say I want to replace my wood floor on my patio here. All I have to do is click the wood material that I like. So let's say this wood herringbone. All you do is click import selection. Now the green checkbox there saying it imported successfully. So now what that did is that just imported that into my SketchUp project and created a SketchUp material for me. So now if I already know how to apply materials inside of SketchUp, I already know how to apply Enscape materials. So it's that fast and we can see here's the new changes applied to my model with the new Enscape material. Now I can edit that like I normally would any other SketchUp material by going and editing the size, the tint color as well, or the brightness of the texture as well or we have what we call our Enscape Material Editor. This is Checkered Ball. This is gonna show me all the different SketchUp materials I have inside my project here. So now what I can do is go and further edit this. So I can change the scale. So let's say like 1.5, not 15, 5. click the rotate button. So again, I can see these changes happen instantaneously here. And really cool thing too is, if we go back to the edit tab, we can see whatever changes to the scale I made, it's gonna update inside of SketchUp for me as well. We can also utilize that Enscape material, material Editor to our advantage to preview what different materials are gonna look like. So again, for my wood floor, this is where if I click on any material, there's going to be three little dots that pull up. Now I can hit replace with Enscape material. This is going to give me a nice preview of what these different materials are going to look like. So if I like this one, all I have to do is click the replace button. From there, that's going to replace just the 
the image maps. It's not going to mess with the naming convention or anything like that. It's just going to replace the material maps. We can also get a little bit custom with this material. And let's say we want to replace uh, this material right here with a custom material that we've created or found ourselves. So let's go over here. And let's say I want to replace this material. Perfect. All right. So let me just re remove these. So now if I have a manufacturer specific material or anything like that, let's go to textures and go to stone. I can load in my albedo map, which is going to be the color of the image. I can load in my bump map, which is going to be a black and white map. Wherever's black is recessed, wherever's white is raised up. In my reflection map, I'm going to use a map called the roughness map. So wherever's black is shiny, wherever's white is dull. So this looks pretty good. Um, we can use this material editor to make things more advanced. So if I click the drop down, it says bump map, and I click displacement map, now it's going to give me the ability to adjust the recess value of that. So I can adjust this and really dial in how I want that material to look. It's going to add some more realism to it as well too. So you can see when I change the time of the day, we can see all the shadows updating accordingly. And a really cool feature is if I click on the three dots and click export material package, you can actually export this material as an Enscape material. So you can start setting up your company library of Enscape ready materials. And to import that, all you have to do is go to the three lines, click batch import, and import those materials and you'll get all the different material properties that came with it and their values as well. Alright, so now that's the asset library, we talked about materials. Now let's jump into lighting real quick before we get ready to do a rendering. So let's say if I want to add some lighting under my cabinets right here, let's go inside of, here we go. All right, let's add some lighting under here. So since SketchUp doesn't have lights, Enscape, uh, we created our own. So it's the Enscape Objects tab. This is where we can choose, let's say, a spotlight. So let's just say first click is going to be on the surface I want. Second click is going to be anywhere along that surface where we want that light to be placed. Pull that down. Third click is going to be the surface I want that light to touch. And then fourth click is going to be anywhere along that surface where I want that light to be. And we can see here, now we have light coming in. We can adjust the intensity of that. We can adjust the beam angle. We support IES profiles as well. So if you have manufacturer specific IES profiles, you can definitely load those in as well too. Cool tip as well is if you need to tint the light, all you gotta do is click a, click a color you want, click and paint bucket that light, and it's gonna show that color. So that's how you can start uh, throwing lights into your scene to help add more realism to it and really light your scene. One other feature before we get ready to do a rendering is we have the ability to create views inside of Enscape and those will create SketchUp scenes for us. So if I go to my view management tab, this is already going to show me the different SketchUp scenes that I've created inside my project. But if I say I want to create a scene from right here, all I have to do is hit create view, call it what I need to, we'll say kitchen, kitchen and then hit create. And from here, that's going to create a new SketchUp scene for me. So you can see here's my new scene. You can update the thumbnails as well. There we go. So it's all, again, this kind of nice bi-directional link here, how we can use the two together. All right. So before we get ready to do a rendering, we want to make it look a little bit, or before we get ready to do a rendering, we have what we call our visual settings tab. This is going to control the whole look and feel of the Enscape window. So let's say for early stage designs, if we haven't picked materials yet, we can do what we call white mode. So this is going to turn everything in the scene completely white. So we can do some really nice sun studies. So we can get inside of here and see the overall structure of what the space is going to look like. We can, again, do some nice sun studies as well to see if everything's looking how we want it to be. And that way the clients won't get married to the textures that we've picked if they're not the final ones yet. We have the ability as well to do uh, what we call outlines. So this is where you can adjust the outlines, give it a more uh, cartoony or stylistic look. Then we have some different image enhancing features like saturation, contrast, those types of things. Atmosphere tab is going to control the overall illumination of the scene. 
The sky tab is going to control the density of the Enscape Cloud Sun system here. So we can control the density of the clouds. We can control the, the variety of them as well, too. We can make it a clear blue sky day if we want to. We also have the ability to control what's being seen on the horizon line. So Enscape comes with a couple different ones, desert, forest, mountains, uh, town. Or you could utilize your own that you've created. So for custom sky boxes, if we've created our own, what we could do is load those in here. To really show the clients exactly what that space is going to look like on site. There we go. Looking pretty good. And then our output tab, this is where we're going to set the output resolution of our final renderings. We can also export different material maps for further use or for further compositing inside of Photoshop. One button I always recommend to have safe frame button. So this is where it's going to show me the crop regions of what's going to be in my final rendering so I can adjust my shot accordingly. And then in our visual settings tab here, if we go to the output tab and scroll down to where it says custom, we can see these changes are updating or the crop regions are going to update for me so I can adjust my shot accordingly. Now if I'm ready to do a rendering, all I have to do is hit the Take Screenshot button, tell it where I want it to be saved. With Enscape being a real-time rendering engine, pretty much what you see inside the Enscape window is what you should get for your final rendering. So we can see here, here's our final rendering. Very fast rendering as well. We also have the ability as well to do batch rendering. So you can render any SketchUp scene that you have inside your project. And we can also render pan, uh, batch render panoramas as well, which leads us into our next feature is panoramas. So if everybody's got their cell phones on them and wouldn't mind scanning this QR code. So let's get the QR code up here. Here we go. So if, again, if everybody wouldn't mind scanning this QR code, I'll leave it up for a second. Now this is a great way to get your designs over to your clients because a lot of times contractors can't look at a set of drawings and think of what the space is going to look like in 3D or clients as well. So this is a great way where you can put your QR codes on the set of drawings in that space where the view is. And then everybody can scan it with their phones. It's a cool takeaway for them as well. They can see what the space is going to look like. It should ask you to go to, once you scan it, it should ask you to go to a web link and then allow for immersive mode. And then you should be inside of the cabin there. All right, so then how we do that is we go up to our 360 button, click the drop down for mono or stereo. Stereo just give the option to go to Google Cardboard. And then from here, once it's done generating, you go to your uploads management tab. This is where it's gonna show you all the different panoramas that you've created. And all you have to do is click the little upload button from there that's going to upload it to our cloud storage system where it's housed for you. And then once it's uploaded, you're going to get three little dots that pull up. You can hit the save QR code as file. You can also copy the link that it's tied to and you can email that to your clients and they can just click that link and they'll pull it up through, um, through a web browser so they can pull it up on their computer or their phone as well too. And the next up is our video editor. So our video editor is going to give us the ability to do video animations. So let's say I want to start from right here. All I have to do is hit the plus button down in the bottom right hand corner and then navigate over to say somewhere like right here. All I have to do is click the plus button again. And now I'm going to get a preview of what this is going to look like. And again, I've just been adding keyframes. So keyframes are basically points in time where I want to start here, go here. Now I can edit that at any time by clicking the keyframe and updating the position of that. And I can change the total duration as well up here for the total length of the video. If I'm satisfied with this, all I have to do is click the export button down in the bottom right hand corner. And from here, I get the export options to export my video at whatever resolution I would like. And I'll get an MP4 file that we can send to our clients. These video paths are also shareable as well, so if you're working in a team environment on the same project, you can save the path, send that to your coworker, they can load the path in, and from there they can work out the same path that you're working off of. And the last feature that we have to get our designs to our clients is what we call these standalone files here. 
So this exe file, this is going to create a standalone, basically like a playable game, where it's going to take everything inside the Enscape window and just kind of package it up and create essentially a playable game. So something you send to your clients, they just double click this file, Enscape's going to launch, and from here they can navigate the model, change the time of the day, freely explore the model at, a, at wherever they want to go. They can also go into virtual reality with this as well if they have a system that meets our system requirements. There's also a web standalone as well. So the web standalone is pretty much the same thing, except it's through a web link. From here, what, what you do is just email that to your clients, and then they can navigate the model, change the time of the day. If they can't change anything, all they can do is just view it, same with the exe file. And again, that's just a free viewer that they can navigate around and freely explore a model. And then last thing, Enscape is also a one-click VR solution. So from here, I, if I had a VR system hooked up, all I'd have to do is click the VR button. From there, the client would be able to see, um, or we'd be able to see exactly what the client's seeing inside the headset. So if they move their physical head right, the whole Enscape window would move right. And the best part is, whatever you change inside SketchUp, it would update for them in the headset as well. And that's an overview of all the powerful features of Enscape. Thanks, everybody.